Well, that was astonishing, wasn't it? Did you see that yesterday? Andrew Bridgen, MP for North West Leicester, stood up in the House of Commons to a, an empty chamber, bringing forward an update, an extremely important speech about the situation to the, the vaccine, the harms, the serious harms and deaths as a result of taking a, a certain medical procedure that was being foisted on the general public. You may remember, of course, that Andrew Bridgen stood up in December, I think it was the 13th of December last year. He stood up and he reported on the harms that had been happening and the, the strange numbers of excess deaths that started to appear in the figures since the rollout of a, a certain vaccination that had happened in this country and across the world. And these uh, mysterious uh, demises of people had been happening not only in this country but across the world and uh, people were very interested to know what was the cause. It seemed to be a bit of an anomaly. Well, Andrew Bridgen stood up, as I said, and in this country we have a yellow card system, which I understand is now uh, not going to be published in the future, which is very strange. But we had this yellow card system so that if you have a medical procedure and something goes wrong or you feel that uh, you've been uh, affected by it, that you would fill in. Uh, roughly 10% of the population ever fill in something. Most people just don't even bother. So the figures that you get are not a fair representation of actually the harm that is done by any medical profession, about 10%, as we said. So there was this uh, yellow card system, and after the vaccination period, there was up to something like half a million people who had been affected, it just under. And Andrew Bridgen wanted to bring this to the attention of the government. It's a very important thing. We'd just had this rollout. People had uh, been told they couldn't have their jobs unless they had this particular medical intervention. And many people had, had, had been coerced through mainstream media and the diktats of the government to have this medical procedure. And most people have done it, not only in this country, but around the world. But our government specifically sending out the message that you, you basically had to have it if you were going to save granny. Even though that the uh, one of the companies, Pfizer, had said that their product didn't actually stop the virus, which is there what it was supposed to stop from from actually spreading to other people. And yet the government still went ahead and mandated uh, vaccine passports, which seemed a very unusual situation. Anyway, people can make mistakes. People can get uh, all uh, het up in the situation and, and errors get made. So it was important that an MP would stand up and question this and, and report to the rest of the House and say, actually, there's a problem here. We should be looking at this because in the past, when there's been problems with other medical interventions or procedures or uh, medical pills and tablets and vaccines that we've had on offer, if anything like these sort of figures had happened, we would stop immediately and look at the data and maybe reevaluate whether the medical procedure was worth having at all. And yet uh, nobody was doing that on this. And these numbers were extremely high and it was unusual. And so, of course, somebody like Andrew Bridgen, uh, I mean, it could have been any MP, but Andrew Bridgen had been the one and was quite astonished that nobody else was really that bothered. So he stood up and he made this uh, case in Parliament in the House of Commons on the 13th of December. Which, curiously, the House was empty when he made that uh, statement. People were no longer there. They couldn't be bothered to turn up. Other MPs could not be bothered to hear the information. Fortunately, it was recorded in Hansard, of course. And, of course, there was the, the, the video that goes from the UK Parliament channel. So that happened. And then something extraordinary happened. This was uh, deemed as misinformation, these numbers of harms on the government's own yellow card system, uh, an alert system to prove if something is not working. It was deemed as misinformation. And not only that, Andrew Bridgen was suspended from the Conservative Party as spreading misinformation, which, of course, was absolutely extraordinary. And yet he was doing a service for the public and alerting the members of parliament, the other members in the House, exactly what was going on.
but nobody was interested. The mainstream media didn't pick that up. They picked up the fact that it had been suspended, but not the reasons why, not the truth behind it, which was absolutely confusing. Well, that was not enough to get to let Andrew Bridge and give up. In fact, that was more a, a, a kick for him to say, hang on a minute, this is absolutely serious. Nobody's listening to me. What's going on? And yet members of the public were very much behind him. And everywhere he went, he was being thanked by staff within the House of Commons, within Parliament, uh, but not by the MPs. People were, were keeping away from him and not listening to him which was, again, very strange. I reached out to him very early and had him on my show and interviewed him, and he told us the story. I'll link to it in the description in case you want to watch that again. But this continued. The mainstream media kept quiet. Government almost wanted to look ex any, any other way than at this issue. And in fact, my viewers wrote to their MPs to ask them, hang on a minute, there seems to be a problem with this vaccine. Uh, not only were they concerned that nobody was listening to Andrew Bridgen, but they had their own stories. People in their families and friends were having serious issues as a result of having this medical procedure that was given to them. And not only that, some of them had friends and neighbours and lovers or members of their family die quickly oddly, suddenly. This was not just happening in this country, however, it was been happening, as I know my audience know this, around the world. And on social media and on other video platforms, this has been discussed. I mean, it's, people know this, and yet the mainstream media wouldn't talk about it, and of course the government wouldn't even mention it. So Andrew Bridgen, was thrust aside saying misinformation, you shouldn't trust this man. And then came the rumours that Andrew Bridgen was suicidal because the pressure was too much. And I was told, any chance you could get Andrew Bridgen back on your show? And I said, well, of course. And I reached out to Andrew and he came back on the show and he said, yes, I've heard these rumours I'm supposed to be suicidal. I'm not suicidal. In fact, I'm G'd up. This is so important. This is one of the most important things that anyone could get involved in. There's so much harm has happened from something that's been state sponsored, that has been rolled out by the government. And we've seen, of course, in the in the Twitter uh, files, in the in the WhatsApp files, rather, the the, uh, the harms that have been, um, the, the uh, abuse and the dis despicable attitude of the government about scaring the pants off people from people like Matt Hancock and others that had been at the time behind the scenes, the machinations of government of how the, the, the virus was going to be that scary. And then we had the rollout of this one procedure, which you weren't allowed to take anything else. You know, any other thing, you couldn't even, um, even vitamin D. Vitamin D was uh, said to be useless. Don't, don't talk about that. We have this one thing, the vaccine, this one thing. We will wait. We will lock people down until the vaccine comes out. We will disrupt their lives. And they did. We will cause people a lot of hardship. We won't let them go out into the sunshine. They can't try any other medical things like ivermectin or anything like that, that were already on the shelf and, and relatively cheap to produce and roll out quickly. No, 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 we had to wait for this one miracle cure. And then it turns out that people taking the miracle cure were having problems. Not only were some people dying, but people were having strokes and strange um, blood clots and all sorts of issues. But nobody would talk about it, apart from one man who on the 13th of December brought the issue to the government and they ignored him. In fact, as I say, they threw him out. And so the rumours was the pressure was too much that Andrew was now suicidal. I got him on the show and he said, no, of course I'm not suicidal. This is ridiculous. And there was a slight worry, you know, that he would he would go into a woods a bit like Dr. David Kelly. That name uh, should ring a bell to certain people who was found dead from apparent suicidal. It's always been a bit of a strange case, but we'll leave that there for now. 
So Andrew Bridgen carried on and continued, and my viewers continued to write messages to their MPs, and yet the MPs were, were almost talking from the same hymn book, saying, no, 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 we absolutely believe in the efficacy of the vaccine. There's no problem there. It's safe and effective. Those words, time and time again, safe and effective. Well, this has rumbled on long enough. And then Andrew Bridgen managed to get another speech in the House of Commons yesterday on the 17th of March 2023. An absolutely vital update about the situation, about what has happened, about how much money had been spent on a vaccine that had been rolled out to everybody and mandated with passports and in some professions, no jab, no job. This has been something that had been unprecedented for decades and decades and had f affected everybody in this country. And Andrew Bridgen stood up and once again, it was to an, <clears throat> to an empty chamber. But not only that, as he stood up, the few people were there. One bloke was tapped on the shoulder, come on, and um, indicated you've got to go. And the chap walked across the chamber to the other side and beckoned to somebody else to leave. People just abandoned him. And so only in the chamber yesterday, and the pictures are there, it shows it was completely empty. This so important update on the harms that have happened from something the government had rolled out and had mandated and had enforced with huge amounts of fear mongery and propaganda with the mainstream media on board. And people were abandoning the chamber. No one was prepared to listen apart from a representative from the government and presumably the staff who had to be there were reporting it for Hansard and of course a, a deputy speaker, but nobody else. The contempt, the contempt from, from the MPs that would not go there was just, I mean, they were scared. They showed themselves for what they were that this one courageous man who was reporting and doing his duty, the things that we pay our MPs to do, and yet the others would not turn up, not only on his side to support him, but on the, in the opposition or any of the other parties. Absolute disgrace, absolutely despicable. Millions of pounds had been spent on this vaccine, this so-called vaccine. And yet, from Andrew's own figures, from the government's own figures, I should say, that Andrew was reporting on, incalculable harm and death has been the result of this mandated medical procedure. And still, the mainstream media don't talk about it and still the government sweep it under the carpet. Well, they're scared, aren't they? They're scared. They can't talk about it because what would this mean? They're all complicit. This is the problem. Absolute cowards, yellow bellied cowards, the lot of them cannot do their duty, cannot face up to the facts of this such miscarriage of justice. Totally disgusting behaviour. Never seen anything like it in my life. And of course, they've revealed their true colours on all the parties there. I mean, it's remarkable because it is the biggest health hazard for decades. And nobody wants to know. Nobody wants to talk about it. As Andrew said, it is, and I may be paraphrasing somewhat, it is state-sponsored harm by greedy money-grabbing elites. There's no other way of putting it. The figures speak for themselves. You can check it up on Hansard. You can look on the Parliament channel and, and listen to those, those figures. The amount of people who, in order to save one person from going to hospital, so many people would be harmed and many of them would die. I, I mean, you could not make this up. If this was a fictional story, you would just think it was far-fetched. The thing is, this is not going away. This is not going away. You see, you cannot bring back the dead. These lives matter. They matter to people. 
these wasted, these dangered, these damaged lives, they matter. This is not going away. The government is finished. So we need to rise up and back this one noble man, Andrew Bridgen, for continuing day after day to bring to us, the public, and to the government who are ignoring him, this continual fight for justice and telling the truth as it is. We need to back him. We need to flood the other MPs with letters and ask them, why did they not back Andrew Bridgen? Why did they not attend? Why are they not reporting on the most dangerous thing that has happened to humanity across the world, but in particular to this country, that has been outrolled by the government themselves? Why are they not taking the responsibility? Why are they hiding behind safe and effective? And if necessary, because they're not representing us and they're not doing their job, they should be taken to court. The matter should go up before judges, a trial by jury of our peers. Why are these MPs not being taken to court? You're not representing us. You've been told this is happening and you're just not doing your job. In fact, we should probably withhold our taxes and not pay their wages if they're not doing their job. What, what, why are we paying these people if they will not turn up? It's, it's, beyond, it's beyond reasonable behaviour. It is beyond their... I just have no... I don't have the words. I'm just so disgusted. In fact, what we should do is encourage Andrew Bridgen to start a new party, to find people like him true, genuine, upstanding members of the community who really genuinely want to represent the people. We need a new party, we need something different and Andrew Bridgen has proved that he is the only one who is prepared to put his face above the parapet. We must rally behind Andrew Bridgen, we must get the people on his side, we must get rid of these others, they are insignificant, they are irrelevant. And we must get behind Andrew Bridgen and encourage him to set up a new party to represent us and get this country out of the crap that we're in and look forward to a brighter future.